we will learn about plant tissue, meristematic tissue. All living beings are made up of cells. The cell is a fundamental, structural and functional unit of life. In different organisms, there are different number of cells. In some organisms, one cell is itself the entire organism. Organisms whose body is made up of single cell are called unicellular organisms. In such organisms, the single cell carries out all fundamental functions like movement, food intake, gaseous exchange and excretion. And in other organisms, many cells combine to form one organism. Organisms whose body is made up of more than one cell are called multicellular organisms. In such organisms, cells form different groups in which each group performs a specific function. For example, in plants, the cells of conducting vessels transport food and water from one place to the other. In the same way, in humans, the muscle cells contract and relax. This results in movement and blood transports oxygen, food, hormones and waste products. In this way, the various functions of body are divided into different groups of cells. This we call as division of labor. Therefore, different organs of body perform different functions. In the body, a specific function is performed by a specific group of cells at a definite place. This group of cells is called a tissue. For example, xylem, skin, blood, muscles are tissues. All the cells of tissue have the same shape and together perform one function. Due to special organization of cells and the division of labor, all body functions are performed with high efficiency. We know that plants cannot move from one place to other and they stand upright in one place. Therefore, in plants, supportive tissues are present in large amount, which provides them with structural strength. Now, since dead cells can provide structural strengths, just like living cells, and dead cells require less maintenance. Therefore, the supportive tissues are made up of dead cells. In contrast, Animals can move from one place to other. That's why animals consume more energy as compared to plants. Due to this, most of the tissues of animals are living. Talking about plant tissues, some plant tissues keep dividing throughout their life, so their growth is limited in some areas. Whereas cell growth in animals is more uniform. Therefore, plants and animals have different types of tissues. Now, let us understand plant tissue, meristem in detail. On the basis of division capacity of plant tissue, plant tissues are classified into meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. The tissues of plants whose cells are actively dividing throughout their life are called dividing tissue, also called meristematic tissue. In plants, meristematic tissues are found in certain specific areas. Due to this, plant growth takes place only in certain specific areas. The function of meristematic tissue is to grow plants. On the basis of the area where meristematic tissue is present in plants, meristematic tissue is classified into apical meristem, lateral meristem, and intercalary meristem. The apical meristem is present in the growth part of roots and stems and increases the length of the roots and stems. Similarly, the lateral meristem increases the circumference of the stem and root and lateral meristem is also called cambium. The intercalary meristem is present in the leaf base 
and near the internodes of the stem, which increases the length of stem and leaves. The cells of meristematic tissue divide, that's why they are highly active. They have dense cytoplasm, clear nucleus, and have thin cell wall. Cells of meristematic tissue do not need to store nutrients. That's why they do not have vacuole. The new cells formed from meristem are initially similar to the meristem, but as they grow and mature, their properties gradually change and they divide as components of other tissues and works with other tissues. So today we have learned about plant tissue, meristematic tissue, tissue. learn about plant tissue, simple permanent tissue. In the previous video, we learned that the cells of the plant tissue, meristematic tissue, keep dividing throughout their life. But as they grow and mature, their properties gradually change. After complete growth, these cells perform a specific function at a specific location and lose the power to divide. To perform a specific function, the cells acquire permanent shape, size and function. This process is called differentiation. Such cells form permanent tissue. The tissue of the plant whose cells are fully mature which cannot divide is called permanent tissue. Permanent tissue is of two types. Simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue. Let us know about the plant simple permanent tissue in detail. The outermost layer of a plant is made up of single layer of cells. This layer is called epidermis. Below the layer of epidermis, there are some layers of cells called simple permanent tissue. Tissue that is made up of only one type of permanent cells that perform the same function is called simple permanent tissue. According to function, simple permanent tissue is classified into parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Parenchyma Some layers of cells form the basic packing tissue called parenchyma. In plants, parenchyma is most commonly found simple permanent tissue. This tissue is made up of living cells and have thin cell walls. These cells are often loosely packed and have free spaces between them. Parenchyma is found in almost all plant parts. For example, roots, stems, leaves, flowers, fruits and seeds. It serves to support the plant and stores food. Parenchyma present in stem and roots also stores nutrient and water. Therefore, these cells have a large vacuole. Parenchyma does not provide protection to the plant. Some parenchymatous tissues have cells that contains chlorophyll. Such parenchyma tissue is called Chlorenchyma. These tissues perform photosynthesis. Similarly, the tissue of parenchyma, which has large air cavities in their cells, is called aerenchyma. Air cavities help the plant to float in water. Therefore, aerenchyma is present in aquatic plants. Colenchyma. Similarly, other plant tissue colenchyma is present in the leaf stalk. Cells of colenchyma tissue are live and long. And they contain cellulose and pectin due to which the wall of cells on the corners are irregularly thick and there is a very little space between them. Lignin is present in the corners of the cells of the colenchyma tissue. Colenchyma provides flexibility to plants. 
due to which some parts of the plants such as stem and leaves bend easily without breaking and it also provides mechanical support to the plants sclerenchyma in plants sclerenchyma tissue is present in the stem veins of the leaves near the vascular bundle in hard covering of fruits and seeds its cells are dead long and thin and in their walls lignin is present lignin is a chemical compound that attaches cells to each other due to lignin the walls of cells is very thick and there is no internal space between the cells therefore sclerenchyma makes the plant hard and strong and sclerenchyma protects the plant let us know about epidermis epidermis is the outermost single cell thick layer the entire surface of the plant is covered with epidermis epidermal cells form water resistant wax layers on the outer surface of the plants which protects the plants from mechanical injury and parasitic fungus the layer of epidermis is continuous and there is no intercellular space between epidermal cells most epidermal cells are flat and their outer and side walls are thicker than the inner wall the epidermis of desert plants is thick and contains a coating of cutin cutin is a waterproof chemical compound that protects plants from water loss the epidermis of leaves has small pores called stomata the stomata are surrounded by two kidney shaped cells those are called guard cells the stomata and the guard cells perform gaseous exchange and the process of transpiration similarly epidermal cells present in the roots absorb water these cells have hair like projections that increase the total absorptive surface of the roots due to this the water absorption capacity of the root increases the aging of plant changes its external protective tissue for example a layer of secondary meristem that is lateral meristem is present in the cortex of the stem which forms the layer of cork cells these cells are dead and do not have intercellular space between them and their cell wall contains a chemical substance suberin that makes plants air and water resistant in this way today we have learned about plant tissue simple permanent tissue and tissue and tissue today we will learn about the complex permanent tissue of the plant in plants there are mainly two types of tissues meristematic tissue and permanent tissue we know that meristematic tissue is of three types apical meristem lateral meristem and intercalary meristem similarly permanent tissues are of two types simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue in the previous video we discussed simple permanent tissues and their types so let's know about complex permanent tissue in detail tissue that is made up of only one type of permanent cells that perform the same function is called simple permanent tissue in contrast the tissue that is made up of more than one type of cells and all the cells in the tissue work together as a single unit is called complex permanent tissue for example xylem and phloem are complex permanent tissue in plants xylem and phloem do transportation 
These both together works as a unit and form a vascular bundle. That's why these are called vascular tissue. A vascular bundle in which cambium is present between xylem and phloem is called open vascular bundle. For example, plants of rose, mango and pea have an open vascular bundle and a vascular bundle in which cambium is not present between xylem and phloem is called closed vascular bundle. For example, plants of banana, sugarcane and wheat have a closed vascular bundle. In the vascular bundle of stem and leaves, xylem is present in the center and phloem is present on the outer side of xylem. In roots, xylem and phloem are present in alternate ways. Plants in which xylem and phloem are present are called vascular plants and plants in which xylem and phloem are not present are called non-vascular plants. Xylem and phloem, that is vascular tissue, helps complex plants to adapt and live in terrestrial environments. Let's talk about vascular tissue xylem. Xylem is made up of four types of cells. Xylem tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma, xylem fiber, together forms xylem tissue. Among these cells, xylem tracheids, vessels and xylem fiber are dead cells and xylem parenchyma are living cells. All these cells are like tubules connected to each other. The structure of tracheids and vessels is tubular and their cell wall contains lignin so their wall is thick as well as there are holes in their walls. These are connected vertically to each other like a perforated pipe. Through these, the minerals, salts and water are transported in vertical direction from bottom to top. The wall of xylem parenchyma is thin and is made up of cellulose. Xylem parenchyma stores food. The cell wall of xylem fiber is thick and they mainly serve to provide mechanical support to the plant. Xylem transports minerals, salts and water absorbed by roots to the stem and leaves. The four types of cells, sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma and phloem fiber together form the vascular tissue phloem. Among these cells, sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma are living cells and phloem fiber are dead cells. Like xylem, all cells of phloem are connected to each other like a tube. The structure of phloem sieve tubes is tubular and in their walls, holes are present. And in these sieve tubes, a sieve plate is present. The companion cells are adjacent to sieve tubes. Through the sieve plate, companion cells provide energy for the movement of food. The wall of phloem parenchyma is made up of cellulose that stores food. The wall of phloem fiber is thick. They are long, unbranched and have needle-like pointed ends. That's why these are also called bast fibers. The phloem transports the food formed in the leaves to different parts of plants. That is, the phloem transports food in both upward and downward directions. Let us now look at different plant cells with the help of an activity. For this, we will take a stem of any plant and cut a very thin section of it. Now, we will keep this section on slide and pour some drops of saffronin and glycerin on it. After this, we will cover this section with cover slip 
On examining the section with the help of microscope, this type of figure will be observed. We can see that in the figure, structure of all cells is different. That is, in stem, different types of cells are present. In this figure, we can also see the position of complex permanent tissue, xylem and phloem in stem. From this figure, we get to know how different cells form a group, that is, tissue. All these tissues perform the different functions in plant. In this way, today we learned about the complex permanent tissue of plant. Of plant. Today we will learn about epithelium tissue of animals. In search of food, meat and shelter, animals move from one place to other and perform different kinds of movements. Along with this, organs present in animal body perform different kind of movements. For example, heartbeats, up and down movement of lungs, blood flows in the blood vessels and many more. Can you tell us how such different kind of movements takes place in animals? Let me tell you, in our heart and lungs, muscle cells are present. These muscle cells contract and relax due to which different organs of our body can move, by which body organs are able to perform necessary functions. We know that a specific function in the body is performed by a specific group of cells at a definite place. This group of cells is called a tissue. For example, blood and muscles both are tissues. The different functions of the body are divided into different tissues and this is called division of labor. On the basis of function performed by tissue, animal tissue is classified into epithelium tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and nervous tissue. Now, let's understand the epithelium tissue of animals in detail. Epithelium tissue is the tissue that covers the body of an animal and provides external protection. The organs and cavities present inside the body are covered by epithelium tissue. Mouth, alimentary canal, lining of blood vessels, alveoli of lungs, kidney tubules, skin and many more are made up of epithelium tissue. To keep different body systems separate, Epithelium tissue forms the barrier between different body systems. The cells of epithelium tissue are tightly packed and have very less intercellular spaces. Therefore, this tissue forms the continuous layer. They have a small amount of cementing material between them. Substances that enter and leave the body, pass through any of the layers of epithelium. That's why there is permeability between epithelial layers, which plays an important role in exchange of substances between body and external environment and exchange of substances between different organs of the body. Generally, an extracellular fibrous basement membrane separates all epithelium from the underlying tissues. On the basis of function performed by epithelium tissue, epithelium has different types of structures. The organs of the body where substances are transported through a selectively permeable membrane 
their flat cells of epithelial tissue are present. These are called simple squamous epithelium. It is a very flat and delicate, that's why it forms a delicate lining. Lining of the mouth and esophagus is covered with simple squamous epithelium and the body's protective cover, the skin, is made up of simple squamous epithelium. This epithelium performs transportation of specific substances. To protect the epithelial cells of skin from wear and tear, many epithelial layers are present in the skin. Since the epithelial layers of skin are arranged in the pattern, it is called stratified squamous epithelium. This epithelium protects our body. Organs of the body where secretion and absorption takes place, for example, in the inner lining of intestine, long epithelial cells are present, which is called columnar epithelium. It helps in crossing the barrier. This epithelium secretes intestinal juice and absorbs nutrients. Columnar epithelium present in trachea has hair-like structures on it which is called cilia. That's why this type of epithelium is called ciliated columnar epithelium. These cilia move, that's why mucus present in trachea moves forward and nasal passage becomes clear. Inner lining of salivary duct and kidney tubules is made up of cuboidal epithelium. This provides them mechanical support, secrete saliva and absorbs excess substances present in urine. Sometimes a portion of epithelium tissue folds inward where some epithelial cells acquire additional specialization as gland cells and form a multicellular gland which is called glandular epithelium. Salivary glands, sweat glands and sebaceous glands are example of glandular epithelium. This epithelium secretes sweat and mucus. Today we have learned epithelium tissue of animals. Mills. 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 Today we will learn about the connective tissue of animals. In the body of animals, various tissues together perform the different functions of the body. On the basis of functions performed by tissues, animal tissue is classified into epithelium tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and nervous tissue. Now, let's understand the connective tissue of animals. The tissue that connects the various organs of the body with each other is called connective tissue. That's why blood and bones are the types of connective tissue. The cells of the connective tissue are loosely packed and are embedded in an intercellular matrix. This matrix may be fluid, jelly-like, dense or rigid. The nature of the matrix varies according to the function of the particular connective tissue. Now, if we pour a drop of blood on the slide and observe it with the help of microscope, then we will see cells of different types like this. That's why 
Blood is a type of complex tissue. The fluid matrix of blood is called plasma. In plasma, red blood corpuscles, white blood corpuscles and platelets are suspended. With this, plasma also contains water, glucose, proteins, salts, enzymes and hormones. We know that blood transports digested food, gases, hormones and waste products from one part to another part in the body. That means it performs the function of transportation. From blood capillaries, a fluid is secreted, which is called lymph. This fluid is present around the cells of the body. The cells of the lymphatic tissue, that is, white blood corpuscles, are suspended in the fluid matrix. Lymph provides immunity to the body. We know that bone also connects the different organs of the body with each other. That's why bone is also the type of connective tissue. Bone cells that are osteocytes are embedded in the matrix composed of calcium and phosphorus. That's why this matrix is hard, due to which this tissue is hard and strong. That's why we are unable to bend the bone. The bones form the framework, which provides shape to the body and provides movement to different body parts. Along with this, it also provides support to muscles and main organs of the body. The two bones are connected with each other by the ligament. Therefore, ligament is also a type of connective tissue. There is very less matrix in the ligament that connects the bone and other bones. Ligament is very elastic and strong. The bones and muscles are connected with each other by tendon. Therefore, the tendon is also the connective tissue. It is strong, fibrous and tissue with limited flexibility. Similarly, the cartilage is also the type of connective tissue. Cartilage is present in our ear, nose, larynx and trachea. The cells of this tissue that are chondrocyte are flexible and widely spaced. That's why we can bend cartilage easily. Its cells are embedded in a matrix composed of proteins and sugars. Cartilage smoothens the joints of bones and gives shape and support to different organs. The areolar connective tissue is present between the skin and the muscles of the body, around the blood vessels and in the nerves and bone marrow. The cells of this tissue are loosely packed and are embedded in a jelly-like matrix. This tissue fills the space inside organs and supports the internal organs and also helps in repair of tissues. Similarly, the adipose tissue is present below the skin and between internal organs. Its cells that are adipocytes are embedded in a jelly-like matrix. Adipose tissue stores fat, that's why its cells are filled with fat globules. Due to storage of fat, adipose tissue is a source of energy and it also acts as a heat insulator. So now you can definitely tell why the slim person feels more cold as compared to fatty person. 
today we have learned about the connective tissue of animals today we will learn about the muscular tissue of animals in our daily lives we perform different kinds of movements such as speaking walking running etc can you tell which tissue triggers the movement of various organs of our body think think right muscular tissue triggers the movement of various organs of our body let us understand by an activity how muscle tissue triggers the movement of various organs of our body for this first you fold your hand from an elbow now observe the top and bottom muscles after this straighten the arm and once again observe the muscles we can see that in both cases the muscles are contracted and relaxed due to which there are hand movements the muscle tissue is made up of long cells these cells are called muscle fibers muscles contain a special type of protein which is called contractile protein this protein is contracted and relaxes causing movement of organs on the basis of movement performed by the muscular tissue and its structure it is classified into striated muscle smooth muscle and cardiac muscle we can move our hands feet neck like organs as per our wish this means that the muscle present in the organs like hand feet neck moves according to our wish the muscle that moves according to our will is called voluntary muscle when this muscle is observed with the help of microscope then in this muscle alternate bands of dark and light colors are observed that's why it is also called striated muscles the cells of this muscle are long cylindrical unbranched and many nuclei are present in it hence these cells are multinucleate this muscle is usually associated with bones therefore it is also called skeletal muscle due to which this muscle helps in the body movements and maintains the posture and position of the body does the flow of food in our alimentary canal and contraction and relaxation of blood vessels happen as per our wish definitely your answer will be no that is the movement of muscles present in the alimentary canal and blood vessels is not under our control the muscle which does not move according to our will that is whose movement is not under our control is called involuntary muscle when this muscle is observed with the help of microscope then in this muscle alternate bands of dark and light colors are not observed therefore it is also called non striated muscle this muscle is smooth so it is also called smooth muscles cells of this muscle are long unbranched and uninucleate and their terminal end is pointed that is spindle shaped this muscle is also present in the iris of the eye bronchi of the lung and ureter in our body the heart beats continuously muscles present in the heart contracts and relax rhythmically throughout life due to which the heart is able to pump blood the movement of the muscle present in heart is not under our control therefore it is an involuntary muscle since this involuntary muscle is present in the heart therefore it is called cardiac muscle 
when this muscle is observed with the help of microscope then in this muscle alternate bands of dark and light colors are observed the cells of this muscle are cylindrical branch and uninucleate so now can you tell what kind of muscle is present in the diaphragm present below the lungs find out the answer so today we have learned about the muscular tissue of animals today we will learn about the nervous tissue of animals we recognize the name of our friend only by hearing his voice similarly only by the fragrance we can identify the flower can you tell us how can we do all this think think let me tell you we identify the changes occurring around us and on the basis of these changes we give reactions identifying the changes in the environment by an organism is called stimulus and the reaction given according to the change is called response for example if we inadvertently touch a hot object the touch part of the body is immediately taken back here the hot nature of an object is stimulus and taking back the part of body is a response here information from skin cells reaches to the muscle cells of the arm and movement takes place this work is performed with the help of nervous tissue the nervous tissue present in our body responds to touch sound smell taste and vision therefore all cells of the body have the ability to respond to stimulus nervous tissue is the main tissue of the nervous system brain spinal cord and nerves are made up of nervous tissue the brain spinal cord and nerves together control all the activities that occur in the body the cells of nervous tissue are called nerve cells that are neurons neuron is the functional unit of nervous tissue the neuron stimulates very quickly and transmits stimulus very quickly from one place to another that is the neuron receives and conducts different stimuli neuron is made up of cell body dendrites and axon cell body is like the shape of a star and is the main part of the neuron which contains nucleus and cytoplasm from the cell body long and thin hair like branches arise from the cell body of each neuron small branches like projections dendrites are arised and one long projection that is axon is arised the terminal end of the axon is called nerve ending the dendrite transmits the stimulus to the cell body and through the cell body and axon the stimulus reaches to the terminal end of the nerve from where the stimulus reaches the dendrites of other neuron there is a space between the end of one neuron and dendrites of another neuron this space is called synapse stimulus crosses this space that is synapse and reaches to dendrites of another neuron the stimulus in the nervous tissue is conducted in a similar way and stimulus in the neuron is conducted in only one direction 
from dendrites to the terminal end of the neuron. One nerve cell, that is neuron, can be 1 meter in length. On the basis of number of dendrites and exons, neurons are classified into multipolar, bipolar and unipolar neurons. In a multipolar neuron, there is one exon and two or more than two dendrites. In the bipolar neuron, there is one exon and one dendrite. In the unipolar neuron, there is only a cell body and one exon. Exons are also called nerve fibers. Many nerve fibers bind together by connective tissue and form a nerve. The stimulus that is passed through nerve fiber is called nerve impulse. Nerves transmit nerve impulses to the brain or spinal cord. The brain or spinal cord takes a decision to respond appropriately. Nerves arising from brain or spinal cord conduct this information. The nerves are connected to muscular tissue. For nerves, information is passed to muscular tissue and there is movement of muscle tissue. In this way, with the help of nerve impulse, we can move muscles according to our wish. In all animals, this type of combination provides movement according to stimulus. Therefore, functional combination of nervous and muscular tissue is fundamental to all animals. So today we have learned about the nervous tissue of animals. Animals. Animals.